our friends at Fang and Fur, who really, we know Devin. Devin's one of our friends. He uh, runs a business where he sells feeder insects, but he sent us a ton of worms, a huge variety to give to our reptiles just to see what they like. So I figured I'd make a video to show you the pros and cons and the nutritional value of each species of worm that you can find commercially available. The seven species of worm feeders that we're going to go through in today's video are mealworms, giant mealworms, superworms, silkworms, butterworms, waxworms, and hornworms. Of course, no matter what species of worm you're feeding your reptile, it's important to regularly dust it or coat it with a calcium powder or multivitamin. That will ensure your reptile is getting all of the nutrients and vitamins that it needs. But for the sake of today's video, we're just going to be talking about the worm's individual nutritional value without including multivitamin or calcium powders. Let's start with a very common species of feeder worm, the mealworm. Mealworms are a great feeder insect because they contain a high amount of protein at 18% protein, but their fat content is debatable. Some scientific papers that I've read say they only have 8% fat, whereas others say they have upwards of 30% fat. So it's, I'm, I wasn't really able to nail down an exact percentage of fat that mealworms have, but it seems like most places agree that they have around 13 to 15% fat. The one drawback to mealworms is that uh, they have a high amount of chitin in their exoskeletons. Basically, an insect's exoskeleton is made of chitin, and that's what hardens up after they shed and it protects their body for them and it sheds off when they molt. However, chitin is hard to digest, so if uh, a reptile is fed purely mealworms, then it may have impaction or constipation issues. So that's something to keep an eye on if you feed mealworms. But overall, mealworms are a fantastic feeder because of their high protein levels, and they're super cheap. Through Fang and Fur's website, you can get 50 mealworms for just two bucks. For today's video, I'll just share with you the price of the lowest quantity that you can purchase through Fang and Fur's website. But there are, of course, higher quantity options too, if you wanna like buy in bulk. Next, let's move on to giant mealworms. These are the exact same species as mealworms. They're just older and larger. Basically, they're treated with juvenile hormones to prevent them from pupating. So they just grow bigger and bigger and bigger without pupating and then becoming a beetle. Since they're the same species as regular mealworms, they have the same protein and fat content levels. But because of their larger size, they have uh, a more reasonable chitin to body ratio. Basically, they have a lower chitin level because of their thicker body size. So compared to regular sized mealworms, giant mealworms are a little more digestible and less likely to cause impaction issues. Because of the extra step in treating them with that juvenile hormone to prevent them from pupating, giant mealworms are slightly more expensive at a hundred of them for five dollars. This is just barely more than the regular sized mealworms though. Next, since they look so similar, let's talk about superworms. Superworms should not be kept in the fridge, like what you can do to mealworms and giant mealworms to make them last longer. I accidentally put my cup of superworms in the fridge, which is why they're not moving much. They are no longer living, so learn from my mistake and don't put superworms in the fridge thinking that they're giant mealworms and not actually reading the, the label on the cup. But that aside, superworms, although they may look like giant mealworms, are a completely different species of beetle larva altogether. They have a high amount of protein at around 20%. They also have less chitin than the giant mealworms and regular sized mealworms do for the size of their body. However, they also have a higher amount of fat compared to mealworms at 18%. But really the pros outweigh the cons, so if you're debating whether to do giant mealworms or superworms, Superworms being more digestible and a lot, having more protein are probably the better option between the two. They are a little more expensive than giant mealworms are, with the lowest quantity that you can get being 25 for $2, but that isn't gonna break the bank. Next on our list is a species that's not seen as frequently as superworms and mealworms, the silkworm. Silkworms, I think, are overlooked compared to some other species of worms. They're actually a pretty good option as far as feeders go. They have the highest amount of protein at an amazing 50%. 
There are some sources that state they don't have much protein, but based on the research I've done on silkworms being used in human diets, it seems like they do in fact have about 50% protein. They also have a high amount of calcium. In addition, they have the lowest amount of fat at only 1%. Silkworms are an excellent option if you need to rehydrate your reptile. They have the second highest moisture content compared to the rest of the feeder worms we're going to be looking at today at 82% moisture. And since they have no exoskeleton, they of course have very little chitin, so they are also very easy to digest. You do have to keep these at room temperature though, just like superworms, so don't put silkworms in your fridge. Silkworms are rather hard to find, which is probably why you don't hear of people using them as feeders often. But I did look it up. On Fang and Fur's website, you can get 50 for $12. Up next are butterworms. Now these are also a species that aren't heard of by most keepers, and they have 16% protein, which is pretty good, along with only 5% fat. They also have a decent amount of calcium, and since they don't have an exoskeleton, a very low amount of chitin, making them very easy to digest. I think they're just not often used because people don't know about them, honestly. There's also some people who are under the assumption that butterworms, since they have the word butter in them, are very fatty, but based on the research I've done on butterworms, they're surprisingly a good feeder. So if you're looking for a low fat but high protein feeder worm, a butterworm might be a good option for you. Pricing for butterworms is kind of in the middle of the road. They're priced at 25 for $7. The next one you should be pretty familiar with, and that would be waxworms. Just like these other soft-bodied insects, waxworms have a very low chitin level, so they're very easy to digest. They contain about 15% protein, which isn't very impressive, and they are about 20% fat. They do have a decent amount of calcium, which makes them comparable to butterworms, except they have about four times the fat content. Because of this, it's probably best just to use waxworms as an occasional treat. However, being high in fat isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you have a reptile that's underweight, you can use waxworms to help get the weight back on them. The nice thing is waxworms are super cheap, and you can get like 50 of them for just over $4. And the last feeder worm in today's video is an interesting one, the hornworm. These are also called the tomato worm, and they're considered a pest in many agricultural fields because they eat crops. But in the reptile community, we love feeding hornworms to our lizards. They have a low percentage of protein at only 9% protein, but they surprisingly only have 3% fat, which is only the second lowest. It follows silkworms being at only 1% fat. But I mean, you'd think that a big fleshy grub like hornworms would have a higher fat content level, but it's really only 3%. They also have the highest moisture content level at 85%. So they are an excellent choice to rehydrate reptiles with. In my opinion, the biggest drawback to hornworms is actually caring for them before you feed them off. They're easy to take care of in the fact that you just leave them at room temperature and they come in a cup with their food, but they grow incredibly fast. I mean, it seems like they almost double in size every night, so you have to feed them relatively quickly before they become too big for your reptile to handle. They are, unfortunately, the most expensive feeder worm out there, and usually they're over a dollar each. So I've gone to some retail, like, chain pet stores, and they have a box with a single hornworm in there for $4, which is ridiculous in my opinion. Through Fang and Fur's website, you can get seven of them for $12, and the more you buy, the better deal you get. But that covers all seven species of feeder worms that we wanted to cover in today's video. And of course, I'd like to thank Devin, if you're watching this, thank you for all of these feeder insects. It was fun trying them all out with all of our reptiles. If you are interested in purchasing some feeder worms or other insects too, Fang and Fur also has things like crickets and roaches. Just go to fangandfur.com and you can check out all of their amazing deals on their website. I mean, I look, I probably shouldn't say this, but I looked around at other websites to see what their prices were in comparison to Fang and Fur, and in all honesty, I, I was quite surprised. Fang and Fur does, from what I can find, have the best prices out there, so I'd highly recommend ordering from them. They came in and, oh, sorry, kind of tossed you on the counter. They came in looking great, and my reptiles are loving them. And thank you to everyone who watched today's video. I hope you learned something new, and of course, Thanks to our amazing Patreon supporters for all of your generosity in backing this channel. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you next time. But because of their large... Oh, he just fell. Here you go, hornworm. Next on our list is a more uncommonly... Ugh.